TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Quite the day yesterday to the upside. We've accelerated overnight to an area of about 39.64. So you were 30 points above where we're trading at right now. You look at the low we just had. I mean, you talk about some volatility, folks. Looks like a pretty calm market. You wake up, the S&Ps are negative by two points. Meanwhile, overnight, you had the S&Ps trade down more than a full percent from the highs to the lows. It's becoming so normal that it seems just uh, normal, for lack of a better word. But nonetheless, we had a 1% pullback in the S&Ps just from where we were trading at at 1045 last night back to where we were at about 8 in the morning. You take a look at where we are, though. You talk about a Fibonacci retracement level to pull it up. Not even back to the 382 of the entire move higher we had. You're talking about 130 points to the upside. We give back 42 to the downside. You don't even make it to the 382. We're going to open right almost where we closed yesterday's action. Let's take that off. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action as well. You're trading within two points, 12,271. We started yesterday about 11,900. Look where we are, well above where we were Monday before you had the sell-off, right? S&Ps, well above where we were Monday before that dramatic sell-off as well. You jump over to the Dow. Dow trading 31,762. You're negative barely as well. The Russell off by two points. Bitcoin, continuing to run right now almost made it to 24,000 quite a far cry from where we've been bitcoin just one second for me there we go you jump over to crude crude trading at 99 dollars and four pennies we're going to talk to our man teddy kegstad at 40 past the hour we'll talk a little bit of crude if you haven't checked out teddy's newsletter yet folks the tiger forex report check it out on the front page of tfnn you can save 25 percent for the life of your subscription this month only check that out we'll talk to teddy later in the hour we'll talk a little bit of crude we'll also talk a little bit of notes and bonds with teddy the tenure we got some action this morning. You have lower yields. We're talking about a yield right now, 2.96%. In the 10-year, we got the 10-year up 14 ticks. You got the 30-year up 29 ticks. You take a look at the 30-year on a longer-term basis. We'll back it up even further than that to get the full run. You really got to go back with this run started where they were at the peak, July of 2020, but things really accelerating from about March when you were at 160, you trade down to 131, we're back to 139.15. You're positive, almost a full point. On the 30-year, we jump to gold. Taking a look at gold longer term. August of 2018, 1167, up to 2089. You had been shopping around right at the 382. We're just below that level in the 382. Now, technical analysis, folks, it's a art, not a science. Where exactly is support? On the lower boundary line of this is it at the 382 of 1741 have we already broken below that level is your support the lows that we had about a year and a half ago those lows in march of 2021 and again at the end of march 2021 you're talking about low let's see exactly what we're talking about here 1677 i have march 31st that week and i got a little bit lower i think here 1673 was the low and just recently what do we make it down to 1695 looks to be the recent low. Either way, gold, whoops, let's back out of there. Gold at the lower end of its consolidation, 1706. Silver right now, you see that? Much different, right? Silver well below that kind of consolidation area. You had silver breaking out of that area. 1878, silver's up seven pennies today, and we jump over to the VIX. This is gonna be an interesting one longer term. You zoom in on the action outside of COVID, We've spiked this year alone to 37 and change, 36 and change, 35 and change. The VIX right back down to the area we bounced at at about six weeks ago, 24.54. All right, let's jump around. We had Netflix earnings last night after the bell. Now, Netflix, it's up about 4%. $8 move. 
$30 was the implied move. We'll see what happens on the open. Sometimes you really get a move on the open, even if you don't get it overnight. Netflix did spike as high as 225 last night as the markets waned a bit. Netflix has waned also, given up about $15 of that action. You're trading almost at pre-market session lows outside of where it was last night for Netflix. And let's jump over to the numbers. A uh, couple interesting articles here. You just get into the raw numbers. They lost nearly 1 million subscribers in the quarter after forecasting a dip of losing 2 million subscribers. It's all about the subscribers right now for Netflix. Eventually, it's going to turn into advertising as well. The company forecasts a million net ads for the third quarter. Market was looking for an ad of 1.8, but you add in the fact the market was looking for, they were forecasting a dip of 2 million. They lose just a million. They forecast 1 million net ads now. On the next quarter, maybe they'll begin growing again. Counting on changes such as cracking down on password sharing and adding an advertising tier to start in 2023. I'm not so sure that if you just crack down on the password sharing, which they definitely can do, okay, they can make it a lot more difficult when you're logging in on different IPs, on different locations, checking that the, you are the person. Maybe it's double verification in some fashion. That doesn't automatically translate to all those people signing up, folks. Maybe you have an aunt or an uncle or a nephew or a niece or a kid or a parent or a grandparent that's sharing them or just a friend. That person doesn't have their own account because maybe they're not using Netflix enough to warrant paying $20 a month, $15 a month for Netflix. Just because it's a little bit more difficult for them to log in, don't imagine that they're just going to transi transition to signing up immediately. Now, that's the numbers, okay? Uh, they were positive as they talk about. Yeah, I was looking for even the earnings. They don't even talk about the earnings in this. Right? Pretty remarkable because it's all about subscribers, probably rightfully so. Now I jump over here, opinion piece from Bloomberg, okay? Martin Pierce, opinion piece, this is opinion, it's not news, okay? Netflix shouldn't take a victory lap just yet. Some interesting facts, though, that are in this. Subscriber losses were not as severe as expected in the second quarter, but investors need to look at the fine print. So we just went over the subscriber losses for the last quarter. They only lost a million. They were supposed to lose two. Uh, they lost about 970,000 was the exact number, just shy of a million. They talk about that they pushed the stock higher. But then Mr. Martin Pierce says, well, hold on a second. If you look at Netflix's subscriber numbers regionally, things don't look so healthy. So this is an important part of this whole conversation, folks. The only area where Netflix showed any real growth was Asia Pacific, where it has a smaller presence than elsewhere. It's only growing in its smallest market. In its two biggest regions, North America and Europe. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on one second. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, I'll do that again. So the only area they showed growth in was Asia Pacific. Its two biggest regions, North America and Europe, the Middle East and Africa, those are two regions, North America and Europe, Middle East and Africa, Netflix subscriber losses increased meaningfully. In North America, Netflix lost 1.3 million subscribers, about double the loss in the first quarter. Losses are accelerating, okay? Accelerating in their biggest, most profitable market. It's never good to be shrinking in your biggest and richest markets. North American losses in particular reinforce the idea that Netflix blundered by raising prices as competition from the likes of Disney, Apple, and Warner Brothers Discovery was increasing. You know, maybe they lose those people without the price hooks. I'm not sure. But Netflix is not what it used to be in terms of price. It's now 15 to 20 to, to more than $20, depending on what level membership you have in terms of how many people you can have streaming uh, but that's something i hadn't heard yet this morning you know shrinking in the biggest markets accelerating in the u.s losing 1.3 million subscribers in the u.s uh we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the show they're making more money though average revenue per membership in north america up seven percent 15.95 stay tuned i'll be right back folks Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now. You're negative by three points. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by three points. You get the Dow negative by about 37. All the markets just off the highs you had earlier this morning. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. And folks, it is a great time to check out the program because we're coming into earnings week. We got some great companies this week. We get all the big tech stocks coming out, at least a lot of them next week as we kick into earnings season in full gear. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, lots going on this morning. Not a lot in terms of economic data, but the economic data we did get wasn't very good. Mortgage apps, uh, the lowest level since 2000 in ter terms of mortgage app applications, Tommy. It's inflation, the combination of inflation, taking money out of the savings account, and higher interest rates are, are affecting the uh, purchasing power of, of Americans and Hey, you know, mortgage apps took a pretty big hit uh, this week. But overnight, the news was all about Netflix. Today, the news and the focus will all be about Elon Musk and Tesla. We'll get some airlines, United and American, in there as well. But today is really all about Tesla and Netflix. The reaction to Netflix and the, uh, the, the apprehension or excitement about Tesla's earnings this afternoon. So jumping back to Netflix real quick, you guys had a great yeah. program yesterday as usual. I was checking out the program. I was watching the segment on Netflix, uh, and you had a trade out there, one of them looking for some volatility, Kevin. I know you went out, I think you went out a couple weeks, right? Did you go out past this Friday on that Netflix trade that you guys were making yeah, for we the volatility? Out, we went out to next week. So our trade is, is out to next week, and we did two different trades, uh, one for the more aggressive intermediate trader and one more for the beginner. And both looked for movement, Tommy, movement in, in Netflix. But what we did 
because we didn't focus on just this week in options. We gave you a little more time, a little more duration on the trade to make that move a little more more possible, give you a higher probability on that trade, Tommy. But, yeah, what we focused on Netflix was movement. What We, we didn't know, as we don't, which way it's going to go. So we prepared for movement in either direction, Tommy. I thought it was pretty cool, man, going out a couple of weeks because most times people, if you're trading, maybe you're trading on the, the earnings event, right? You go out to the shortest expiration to pay the least. Uh, but I've got the Thicker Swim platform up here, Kevin, and these prices as of the close yesterday, folks, okay, on the options. So you're looking at a $32.37 implied move for this week. But if you're paying the premium for the volatility, you go out next week, it's only 37 And, man, this market, one of the, re the things I'm always considering, Kevin, is – if you're bullish or you're bearish, the market is moving so much right now, even being in individual equities, right? You'd want to have some idea what you're expecting the market to do. And every two weeks in the market, man, we're getting some pretty big moves. So we'll see how that trade plays out. Netflix higher this morning, up to 210. Uh, they lose subscribers for the second quarter in a row, but they say they're going to turn that around. Uh, we'll see where we go from there, right? Uh, Tesla, as you said, coming up there, the main event today. We jump over to Tesla, Kevin. I jump to the Analyze tab. They've got about a $40 move priced in for a $736 stock. That's for the Mark one day expected move. When you jump over to the trades, this week, you're looking at about $50 is the implied move. Uh, give us a little teaser maybe on what you're looking for Tesla as they come into their numbers sitting at about $740 today. Yeah, all the things that are affecting U.S. multinationals, and now Tesla is a U.S. multinational, are going to affect Tesla, right? The U.S. dollar is going to affect Tesla. Supply chain problems are going to affect Tesla. Chip shortage, uh, inflation, the war in Ukraine, all these things are going to affect Tesla. So expectations are fairly low. So let's see how Elon Musk, just like Reed Hastings, right, he was able to present a positive outlook for Netflix go go going forward. So it's all about, Tommy, earnings, Everyone wants to talk about what, what, are, what are earnings about. Earnings are about expectations and whether you're able to beat or not beat those expectations. At least for today, or at least for that micro shot, that, that photo right then, the snapshot, that's what earnings are about. It's the expectations. Netflix didn't do necessarily great, but it beat expectations, Tommy. Yeah, maybe that's the, the road to turn around. For Netflix and Tesla, I've got it up on the Thinkorswim platform from the entire run at the COVID lows of about $70, which is remarkable, up to $12.43. We're sitting at $7.36. Uh, and remarkable, Kevin, as time flies that, you know, it seems like Tesla's been going up forever and then you have the big pullback this year with many of the tech stocks. But you could make a case that now we're at a price point we've been at for a year and a half on Tesla shares. We came into 2021, actually, at about the price point we're trading at right now. A uh, little bit of consolidation in some of these equities, at least, as time extends. With that in mind, Kevin, I know one stock you guys might be touching on today for the program at Far Fast Market. But what are you guys talking about at 12 today? We'll start out with United Airlines. Comes out with earnings after the bell today, along with Tesla. Then, like Folio, we'll do their presentation on Tesla, and we'll trade we Tesla. Go. And then we'll do D. A. D. R. Horton, uh, the, the home builder, who also has earnings. So, three earnings plays today on on Bass Market: uh, United Airlines, Tesla, and D. R. Horton. Home builder. Yeah, you know that. You know, you were talking about the mortgage applications, man. It's got to be pretty tough to be thinking about buying a house you, you're you know a lot of different areas you're in a rock and a hard place right now rent prices you know skyrocketing it probably makes sense if you have the ability to get into a house even at these levels but it's got to be pretty tough kevin even you know i look at the florida market right you say price is up 30 percent or something silly on, on in most occasions so you got a three hundred thousand dollar house that's now a four hundred thousand dollar house and meanwhile a year ago a three hundred thousand dollar house you got a three point five percent mortgage on and now you're got to get a five point five percent mortgage on a four hundred thousand dollar house that's a daunting prospect man for that housing market uh especially looking at those who need mortgages um, so we'll see where it plays out. But they're doing a lot of building, man. Right here, I'm in the middle of Florida by Lakeland, uh, and they have a unit. They, I think it's three different builders, Kevin, 
DR may even be in there. I know like Lennar's in there, uh, like 1,400 houses, something like that getting built right, right next to our property. So pretty cool. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time and the education as always, man. We'll be watching today. We got some airlines, we got Tesla, and we got some uh, home builders as well in there. We appreciate it, Kevin. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure, man. You too. Folks, tune in 12 o'clock today. Tesla, they'll talk about, uh, they'll talk some airlines, and yeah, they'll talk some builders. Uh, pretty interesting in terms of where that market goes. Mortgage applications, why don't we jump over to that right now to start things off? 22-year low. Makes sense, folks. You know, I mean, it can still make sense to buy a home, okay? You can always refinance when rates come down. If you're going to be paying a very high rental price anyway, why not be stowing a little bit of that away in terms of paying for the capital, the equity into the home? Uh, you could make the case if you're really looking for a big pullback in the market. Maybe you could rent for another year or two and avoid that and get better prices. But that's not a guarantee, folks. We are in a housing shortage. And with inflation raging, that is going to contribute to possibly housing prices holding up, even as you have rates rising, hurting the buying power of consumers but mortgages they're gonna see it man um you could almost make the case i'm surprised it's not worse mortgage demand falling more than six percent last week compared with the previous week lowest level since 2000 talk a little bit more about this when we come back we'll be back for the open folks stay tuned of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you're looking at the markets basically flat. S and P's negative by two ticks. Nasdaq 100 positive by four. The Dow negative by 18. Let's jump over and see how Netflix is trading on the open. Look at that, man. You almost give it back. Only up two percent. Maybe they're paying attention to the fact, like we talked about uh, in that opinion piece that they might not be out of the water yet when you talk about a shrinking North American base. Uh, the last part of that conversation that I was going to have, though, talking about Netflix. Do I still have it up? I think I do. Yes, was the revenue. So Netflix is losing people in North America, 1.3 million people, uh, double the rate that they lost last quarter, okay? But they're making more money from those. Netflix ex executives can also point to the financial benefit of the price increases. Average revenue per membership in North America Average revenue, fifteen ninety five. That could be part of the reason they're losing people, folks. That's an expensive membership. You're talking about hundreds of dollars a year for your Netflix membership in the face of everything else competing. Uh, it's a new landscape for streaming in a big way. Increasing revenue off a diminishing number of customers is not a long-term recipe for growth. It is, in fact, how the cable TV industry has been operating for a while, which is hardly an industry Netflix wants to emulate. Yeah, they don't want to start losing Americans in North America. And meanwhile, look at this, man. Did not expect it to give it all back when you look at what they did, though. Up to 225. Be careful on this equity, man. Let's jump over to Disney. Disney's barely positive. They got a lift last night with Netflix. Uh, they give most of it back. The market is negative, barely. Roku catches a little bit of a lift. You're up 2.7% for Roku shares, uh, 28 after they spiked higher as well. Roku got a couple downgrades early yesterday, clawed back to almost uh, get it all back from the open, finished positive yesterday, accelerated higher. I mean, some of the ARK stocks really were rocking yesterday. I mean, look at ARK catching a lift at 2%. Some of these stocks, I mean, what's that going to be? That's going to be Roku has a big position in there. Zoom has a big position in ARC. Zoom's up 2.7%. Let's see how Tesla's trading ahead of their earnings, up 1.2%. So we jump over to the Analyze tab. Tesla for the week, you're looking at about a $53 move. That's not too crazy when you think about from yesterday to last night, you moved $43 and you didn't even have earnings, right? I mean, this market is very volatile right now. If you could peg the directional market, overall direction of the entire market, and you peg an equity that's going to miss or beat their earnings in the same direction, you can really get an acceleration in some of these prices right now. All right, you jump over to some of the chips. They're getting a lot of talk this week with Nancy Pelosi buying some NVIDIA shares. Uh, everybody's all up in arms about that. And, you know, I agree. People from Congress, maybe they should probably have a blind trust. Um, so they're not biased from their financial positions. Maybe they divest like presidents should also do if people are that up in arms. Uh, but all that would have to happen is your politicians just got to get it done, folks. Same thing with the presidency. If you don't want that to happen, we could just make it a law. So they get held accountable and all that stuff. But if your politicians wanted it, if you voted for people that cared about that stuff, then they'd get it done. And there it is. Senate advances more than $50 billion bill to boost the U.S. semiconductor production. Uh, and this one is important from a national landscape, folks, in terms of making sure that we have the power to produce chips that are going to control the world in the future, because you're going to see that play out with China and Taiwan, with Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, it's going to approve about $50 billion in subsidies to bolster the computer chip manufacturing, multifaceted, bipartisan effort, effort but then it states the budget. The current legislation comes more than one year after the Senate first approved a $250 billion bill to reinforce U.S. chip making to compete with China. Uh, and what is it? What is, isn't Taiwan Semiconductor spending like $100 billion or $200 billion or something like that to, to produce uh, more infrastructure to build chips? I'll pull it up in the next break. It's something staggering, the amount of money they're spending that you have to spend to be able to produce these chips. But we need to do it. Because if we leave it all to Taiwan Semiconductor and they're dealing with geopolitical issues with China, that's a problem in the future. All right, what else do I have pulled up here? Oh, okay, this is a good one from John Authors. Opinion piece over at Bloomberg. Some interesting statistics in here about the market, though. Full capitulation could mean opportunity knocking. There's deep negativity over the outlook of the economy, but previous occasions when big fund managers favored bonds this much turned out to be historically great for stocks. 
Okay, past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results is the disclaimer you got to throw when you look at some of this stuff. We are dealing with a very, very, um, what, what would be the best word? Very uh, distinct market right now with very unique, that's the word, unique aspects of what this market is facing. But you look at some of the data, okay? Uh, it's very unusual for big funders fund managers to be overweight in bonds relative to equities and suggest deep negativity about the immediate outlook of the economy. And yet the latest edition of Bank America Corp's monthly survey of global fund managers finds that they are now more underweight in stocks than bonds than at any time since March 2009, the month the stock market hit bottom after Lehman Brothers collapse. So you look where it is. You got 2009. They were super overweight. May of 2020, right after the pandemic, when the stock market really accelerated, on one level, it's awful. Uh, the people who deploy assets for long term think it's better to lend to the government than take a share in the profits of growing businesses. Well, sometimes those multiples that you're paying for the share of the profits is not a very attractive proposition. You can make that case when the S&P was at 4,800, right? When the NASDAQ 100 was trading at 16,000 and change, taking a share of those profits at the multiples the market was going to charge you not very attractive. But then at another level, opportunity might just be knocking. This is how stocks have performed compared to bonds. Excuse me, since the beginning of 2009, the previous two times that the fund management community went overweight in bonds, and that was in the wake of the 2009 crisis and during the COVID lockdowns of 2020. The last two times bonds were overweight, there's the red area in 2009. And then there is the COVID acceleration when you were overweight as well. So there's one take, okay? Then you get into, and this is uh, the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey, okay? And this is net percentage taking higher than normal risk levels, okay? And this is, again, talking about management, okay? And they talk about here, this is what John Arthur is saying, okay? Bank, most of the time, Bank of A's managers think they are taking restless, less risk than usual. And there are times when they're wrong about this, most spectacularly in 26, 2006 and 2007. Okay. However, it seems reasonable to assume that the survey is directionally accurate. Even if they are at times taking more risk than they think, managers are probably right when they believe they're throwing caution to the winds and when they feel like they're being extra careful. And they currently think that they're taking less risk than at any time since the survey started asking the question more than 20 years ago. Okay, and look where they were in October of 2008. The market is forward thinking. It gets ahead of itself, folks. Okay, that's why it started tanking January 1st. It's brilliant sometimes how the market functions and it's forward thinking and anticipates what's gonna happen and money gets ahead of what has happened. Okay. Some of this data is pointing to that maybe we are reaching a possible point. It's got to get backed up by the data, okay? But keep your eye on some of this stuff because when you hit historic levels like this, and we are in a unique situation, which is why you got to digest all of it. But we'll talk a little bit more about some of that when we get back. Stay tuned. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets barely positive right now. You're looking at an S&P positive by three points at 3941. NASDAQ 100 catches a lift up by 50. You get the Dow negative by 50 right now. Commodities, currencies, Bitcoin continuing to rise, hitting about 24,000. Crude right now sitting at 98.42. Excuse me, one second. And with that, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. And folks, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN right now, Teddy has an outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. It comes out every Monday along with updates when warranted. Uh, just kick things off. And this month, folks, you can use code TEDDY25 only through July. So it's already July 20th, right? Use code TEDDY25. Save 25% for the lifetime of your subscription. You still got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so nothing to risk. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So where uh, where would you like to kick things off in this market, Teddy? We got crude sitting at about ninety nine dollars. Uh, we got the euro slightly getting a little bit of a lift back above parity. Uh, what are you looking at in this market to kick things off this week? Uh, I think one of the key things you got to watch. You had the Bank of Japan talking yesterday and also later on uh, today, which is are they going to do something with the rates or not? Probably not. So I'm thinking that you're not going to see anything really occur with that. But you do have some economic numbers for uh, Japan, the CPI being one of them tomorrow. I think that could actually rock the uh, U.S. dollar yen trade. Um, but that is something to watch. Um, if they do make a rate decision, you know, the yen has been one of the strongest trending currencies, you know, uh, that pair, of, you know, for the past like six months, especially. So if they do make a rate decision, um, meaning raising rates, which is kind of unlikely right now, if anything, Japan's probably going to wait a little bit longer and not fall under the pressure, I think, of uh, the rest of the global central banks. Yeah, quite a chart, man. When I put it up here, two big moves. You have the one in March and to a high in May, a slight pullback for about three weeks, and then you take off again, and we're sitting almost right at those highs at 138, man. Uh, and then the ECB, right, tomorrow, we're probably going to get first hike in mm -hmm. 10, 11 years, probably 25, but now I know it's a little bit up in the air with 25 or 50. Um, mm -hmm. What are you looking at for their possible rate decision, how that plays into to the euro and some of the other currencies potentially? Uh, well, right now, I think that's what's giving the uh, the dollar index a little bit of pressure to the downside. And I, I believe that after tomorrow's meeting, once they are done with that decision, then it's going to just reverse gears and dollar strength will kick back in. So I think right now, this pullback in the dollar index, remember, the euro is the strongest component of that. 
um, you know, that's been pulling back for the past uh, week. So I think that right now, anyone that read the for the Tiger Forex report knows that we're coming right into our critical uh, target zone for this correction, which coincides with this ECB meeting. I think what will happen is tomorrow they'll do either they do raise the rates or they don't do anything, whatever it is. After that, you're going to see a sell-off in the euro U.S. dollar because the reality is, is we have a meeting coming up next week, and we know we're going to get at least a three-quarter of a point uh, hike, maybe upwards of a full full uh, percentage point. So that'll out, that'll overtake anything the ECB does, you know. So the ECB thing is a one quick little, unless they were to do something radical, but I don't think that they can. I mean, right now, all the economies in Europe are imploding. And it's pretty remarkable. I was reading about. I mean, it almost gets lost in everything going on over here, that they're sitting at negative 50 basis points right now, and they haven't raised in like 11 years, and the expectation mm -hmm. is they raise a quarter point, which would bring them to negative a quarter point as their rate. I mean, <laughs> even if they go 50 basis points, right, right. their rate's basically zero. Um, right. But it is a change in things, and maybe that is the reason you have a slight pullback. Boy, I got it mm -hmm. up, though. Even just the euro, U.S. dollar, you have a bounce here. But this destruction has been so tremendous that all you have yeah. is is lower lows and lower highs. And maybe right. this is one of those lower highs. Let's right. talk the a little bit. Of, still there. Right. Yeah. Very much intact. I would agree. Uh, let's talk a little bit of crude. So quite a little bounce we have going on from about ninety dollars last week. Yeah. Would we make ninety fifty six on mm -hmm. Thursday? You hit one hundred dollars just yesterday. What's your take on, on crude right now in, in where we are? Uh, well, last week's uh, swing low was a very critical support low. I think that's probably going to be your base. I mean, one of the things that is kind of giving it a little bit of a pause on crude right now is that the global demand in Europe, it's not because demand is waning because they don't want to use it, but there's rationing now of uh, energy uh, supplies, whether it's oil and gas and everything across the board throughout the EU, and it's getting more and more <clears throat> restrictive. So as that happens, you're having an artificial clampdown on demand. That's probably what's holding back crude right now. But as far as global supply, I think that no matter what, this is just a pause for the cause. No matter, I think that we're going to still see another bounce. Now, if crude gets back above 105, look out. Then we are. Then we're making higher move highs after a higher move low. That would confirm a neutral to higher basis. You know, or bias. Excuse me. It is pretty cool that we kind of just traded right back to that breakout area from February 25th. You give it all back from that first mm -hmm. acceleration. You touch almost $90, and just like that, we're back at $100 like nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, our notes in bonds. So we have a little bit of a reprieve right mm -hmm. now. The 10-year sitting at about 2.96, I think. You got the 30-year at 139 and change off of about 131. Uh where do you see maybe that bond market going, given a tease with, with everything going mm -hmm. on with the ECB having, having their action tomorrow? Um, and, of course, with the Fed having a meeting. When is it? Next week, right? Just that right, quick. Right. Next, next Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. Well, I think right now what you have is, I mean, you can see that the, the, the interest rate markets right now are kind of wedging. You know, they're not really they're not trending. They're actually just kind of consolidating. And I think that what you're going to see is basically the pump before the dump, you know. So, like, going into this ECB me meeting, I wouldn't doubt that you're going to see the, the, the bonds and the 10-year and the probably rally a little bit over the next, uh, you know, few day, a day or so. And then after that, we're going to start heading into that Fed meeting. So we know that the expectations are for at least a three-quarter of a point hike, upwards of a percentage point. So I think we'll see the bonds heading towards their lows going into Tuesday. It'll be sometime between tomorrow and Tuesday heading back on support. But remember, during the Fed meeting, stay away from the interest rates because they're going to probably be very, very choppy and sideways on Tuesday and into Wednesday's number. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see how it's going to play out, especially now that you're going to have the ECB potentially in a hiking cycle. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of these paths have been dead set, right, with the U.S., and they have so far to go. Right. I wonder how far they can go. I was reading an article earlier this week talking about that their window was already tightening even before they started hiking mm -hmm. in terms of the market expectation for their total hikes this year already going mm -hmm. down just on the prospect that they can't really handle it, man, um, with this economy, not like we can, um, at least, and we're even in a tough spot mm -hmm. right now. You hit the nail on the head right there, Tommy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, man, and folks, you know, Forex, even if you don't trade Forex, I've learned so much in talking to Teddy, now reading his report every week. It's shaping so much of what's going on. I mean, I know we've talked to you about it before, Teddy, and maybe it's just because I talk to you every week now and I understand the market right. better. But it seems like this is a, an especially important time with like everything going on with Forex, 
with the interest rate structures of each country mm -hmm. and how that's driving. I mean, we're going to see it in this earnings season right now, man. You know, with the For dollar sure. and these companies, if you're not following Forex and, and what these companies are doing, it's it's going to be a huge part of this earnings. Is this is this an especially interesting time as somebody that's big into Forex like yourself? Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's the thing that most people don't understand is the dynamics of how currencies really affect things. And right now, when you have basically hyperinflation around the globe, you know, when you have all these supply chain issues and what have you, it compounds these things, you know. Yeah. And, comp you know, right now, a strong dollar, you know, lots of people are, you know, they're like, well, a, dollar, a strong dollar is good for us, but it's really hammering our, uh, you know, the people we do trade with outside of the U.S. Oh, I mean, the moves are just staggering, man. The yen, right. the euro. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex report. Enter code TEDDY25. Sign up. Save 25%. Teddy, man, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. TF Sounds good, Tommy. Enjoy. You have a great okay, day. Okay, take you. care, man. We'll be right back, folks. The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well. So it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps basically flat, negative by one point. NASDAQ 100, positive by 43. You got Amazon higher today. We'll jump around to some of the stocks before we do. Folks, we just finished up with Teddy right there on the front page of TFNN, the Tiger Forex report. Again, just enter code TEDDY25. 
You add the code, you'll see the 25% savings reflected. That stays with you for as long as you subscribe, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Outstanding report Teddy puts out every week, and he's got updates, folks, that come out throughout the week. Very important time. Going to be interesting to see what happens as the ECB starts their hiking. you got the euro basically at parity. They're going to start hiking from negative 50 basis points, and the expectation is they go up by a quarter point to bring them to negative a quarter point tomorrow. I think it was about a 50-50 shot that they go 50 basis points. That was at least the odds yesterday. The odds on Monday, though, were it was 80% it was chance they go 25 basis points. So things obviously very fluid in this market. You jump over to Amazon, there's a lift for you, up 1.6%. Apple shares are flat this morning. Microsoft shares up a bit. You jump over to Netflix, they give back most of it, man. Pretty remarkable. Up 2% to 205. Now, what's interesting is Netflix is up 2%, right? Disney getting a lift, actually up more than Netflix, up 2.9%. Check out Roku getting a lift, up 5.3% in the streaming sector. Uh, so Netflix giving some of these stocks a lift, but what is going on is you just got some of these growth stocks going. Zoom up 4.2%. Arc up 2.6%, continuing to catch a lift. We jump over to Tesla shares ahead of their earnings tonight. Basically flat, down about two tenths percent for Tesla shares so far this morning, and that's with the NASDAQ 100, positive by about 25. We jump around some of the airlines. American, negative by about 6 tenths percent. United, they are basically flat. And uh, the cruise ships as well, up about 2% for Carnival. Look at that. Let's see where that is. That just break back to within its channel line. So quite a channel line, and check this out. You back it up even further. How cool is that, right? I mean, it's not cool if you're a shareholder, okay? But this thing's been in a downtrend channel since December of 2018, accelerated out of it during COVID, got back within it, right? And what'd you do? Maybe you break back into that channel. Carnival, up 2%. Stay tuned, folks. Now we got to replay this final hour. Last day, we're going to do it with Basil out. I'll be right back for the 10 o'clock update.